Hi, everybody. Uh, it's your friend Nathan Johnson here. We are going to give it a minute uh, for everybody to sign on. But if those of you are here and you're excited, say hi. Let me know that you're here. Um, I will tell you, this, is, this has the potential to be my perhaps most favorite webinar of all time. It's really awesome, it's really specific, and it goes extremely, extremely deep. Now, I do wanna let you guys know, this is a really advanced technique, right? So as we start to look at stuff, hi, uh, as we start to look at stuff, um, I think it's gonna kind of blow your mind. Blow your mind, we're gonna be able to take all this. So this is kind of that kind of half intro where we're waiting some people to sign in. So I'm just, you know, hopefully making you a little excited. Um, but I will tell you guys, this is some top-notch stuff. Like, even as I was, um, you know, I, because I care about you guys, I put I, I do put quite a bit of time. Um, into, Nadia, you stop flirting with me. What would your husband think? Um, now, um, I put a lot of time into these because I care about you guys. But as I was going through this, I got to tell you, this one was relighting um, an entire fire and passion in, uh, passion in, in me. Like, and I'm you know, already pretty darn passionate about makeup and beauty, right? So this, was, this one really was getting my um, juices flowing and, and the fire lit. So um, this is going to be an awesome webinar. So um, we're a minute away. And in one minute, guys, we're going to let it all begin. We're going to let the fun begin. So first things first, as we lead in, I do want to tell you guys, I am so um, honored that you guys come and spend time with me. I think that one of my, the favorite things that I want to say to you, and those of you here live now, and those of you who take the time to watch it and post, when you really, really care about what you do and challenge yourself to learn at a really deep level, you will become extraordinary. There is no other option. You will become extraordinary. So putting in that time, putting in that effort, caring in that way, It'll pay off for you, and I promise you that, if you really put your heart and soul into it. So, this webinar, which I am so excited about, it's all about training the eye. And I'm gonna tell you guys, please trust me, this is one of the greatest things that you will ever learn. And if you really take this extremely seriously and consider it almost study, but I want you guys to, I want you to laugh with it. When, when you discover new things and see them, be like, oh my God, how did I not see that? Never, never, never get mad at yourself, because it can be extremely frustrating. And it's great, and the payoff is wonderful, and it's cumulative. You're gonna notice a year from now that you see things you never saw before, and two years after that, you're gonna see even more. It's gonna be pretty amazing. So for people who don't know who I am, I have the great privilege of being the executive makeup artist at QC. Um, with QC, I develop um, the programs for you. We make sure that it's cohesive and great to learn and um, cutting edge and ooh, pretty amazing, and I, I, I think it is. I think um, the whole QC team has really uh, done some great stuff. Um, I personally have had the great privilege of working with hundreds of celebrities. Uh, they include people like Paul McCartney, Liza Minnelli, RuPaul, Alicia Keys, Kate McKinnon. I was the artist on two seasons of TV's Project Runway. I've been featured in every major magazine as an artist and an expert, both in skincare and makeup. And my biggest passion is pushing people toward their dreams and goals. So you guys being here, Ah, I love it and I'm thankful for you. I'm really, really, really thankful for you. The greatest thing I can tell you, and this is the truth, um, what set me up ahead of the competition faster than anything else was the training. And one thing that I really, really, really wish people had given me before that was what we're about to work on today. You know when people say, what would you have done differently? If you could go back in time, I would have been far faster to take what I'm about to teach you guys seriously. I would have jumped on it and taken it far more seriously, far faster. So what are the things that make a great makeup artist? Training, you need a great creative eye. You have to have passion. All those things are powerful, right? You need a dedication to persymmetry, put precision, symmetry. Do you like that new word I invented? Persymmetry. So guys, now I wanna see great persymmetry uh, from you in everything. You need symmetry, balance, and um, precision. You need knowledge of classic techniques. You need to know how to separate trends from, from technique. And you really, more than anything else, have to just be eager to have a wide open mind. You never want to be stuck in a position or set in your ways or locked into anything. Um, one of the things that I always love to say to people most is, you know, when we talked about this, um, we mentioned it in the webinar last uh, week with Chantal and last week, week two weeks ago. Um, and if you guys um, want to check that out, I know we can, we can pop the link up later um, in the bottom of this. If you haven't seen that, look at it. We talk all about how to succeed in the industry, but the most important thing I can tell you is never stop learning because when you, when you stop learning, you die. It's over. It's over. And especially when you're in something like beauty, you've got to have your finger on the pulse, right? On the pulse. So um, when we talk about these, 
and these handful of things. And you need a lot more than that to be uh, an incredible artist. Um, there's a lot of things that you're going to learn through years and years and years in the field, right? And everything you do is going to get better and better and better the more you practice. Secret, the more you practice, the faster you will become better at these things, particularly the stuff that we're going to um, be talking about today. So like I said, this is an extremely advanced technique and it's something, believe it or not, that a lot of artists never ever master and you're gonna know this because once you really start to go down this road you're gonna look at stuff and you're gonna be like oh my god a celebrity hired that person and I'm seeing these problems in the makeup not everybody masters this and if you do it will put you leagues ahead and I promise you this is something I wish I had learned um, really 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 early on so there's a major common mis misconception and this is one of my, my favorite things to say there's this, you know, everybody says there's no mistakes in makeup. I've said it myself. I've said it myself. And then sometimes this is the evolution of like an educator and a, an artist in the, in the industry. And then I thought to myself, why, goodness gracious, of course there are. There are totally mistakes in makeup. Have you ever met someone who said, I want to hire you. I want a really imprecise makeup and I want really wobbly cat eyes. Can you do that? Can you make one lip really big and one really small? Can you do that for me? Do you possess that ability? No one's ever said that in all of time. So if you lack precision, symmetry, and balance, you're making mistakes in makeup. Now, that might not mean with your creativity. Uh, am I lacking creativity? No. With your creativity, there's magic in creativity. And sometimes you might realize, okay, I got to pull it back. Um, that was a little too creative or, oh, you know, like Coco Chanel says, you know, those of you that are students and have gotten into some of the um, advanced courses, especially fantasy, I love to say this quote. Coco Chanel said it best, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, she said, before you go out, take off one accessory, right? It's the same with makeup. If you decide to stick every crystal on the face and every line down the lip and everything up, take something off. Take something off before you go out the door, right? So um, always keep that in mind. But um, not understand balance, precision. Those are major mistakes in makeup. So as rude as it sounds, right? As rude as it may sound, one of the greatest ways to learn is through someone else's mistakes. So when you are able to look at what someone's done, see what's wrong with it, you're training your eye. You're thinking differently. Your brain is automatically going, don't do that. File that away. Ooh, this would look better. You know, your brain starts to make those connections and it eventually translates to your hand. It's pretty darn powerful stuff, right? And it's all cumulative. That's something that I can promise you. So one of the greatest things that I want you to do, how many of you guys here, and this is something, um, this is something I'd really love to know. Are there any of you that have not joined the QC Make Academy virtual classroom? Are there any of you that have not joined? If you guys haven't joined the QC Make Academy virtual classroom, join it join it. I'm going to talk about it a lot today. And I'll tell you why. This is the greatest place to learn because you are going to see lots of people lovingly sharing their mistakes, not because they're like, they know it's a mistake, but because they want to grow. So they're saying to everybody, here's my work, guys. Tell me what you see. Now, why is this powerful? It's a selfish thing on both sides, right? Because they're being selfish by putting it out. Ha, 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 look at all I get to learn. Everybody's going to help me learn. Ah, so selfish. But you know why it's selfish on your part too? When you give them that information and you, you're doing it, you're studying their work and you're training your eye. So for you to share in that way, it's super selfish for you too. It's a wildly selfish thing for everybody. And that gives amazing payoff, right? So what could be better than when you're doing something selfish, but it equally benefits the other person? Great way to learn, guys. Great way to learn. And I want you to take advantage of it. It also um, starts to make you really think about makeup technically, because you're not just looking at it and going, hmm, do I, from a taste point of view, no, you can absolutely say that, but when you really get down to it and you really study it and you start thinking, hmm, let me see, what do those cat eyes look like? And what's going on here with these lips? You are really analyzing makeup. And when you train yourself to do that, even on someone else's makeup, you start doing it on your own. That's the payoff. That's what's so amazing. And guys, it helps everybody. So it's a, it's a really powerful thing. So if you're not in there, I know I saw that link go up. Uh, the, the links are up there on mine. I don't know where they are on yours. I'm pointing to them right now. They're up there in my window. Um, they, they might be down here for you or over there. I'm not sure. But follow it. Go to it. And guys, trust me right now. You're on a device. Just for one second, open another window and join that virtual classroom. Do not hesitate. Do it now. Um, so let's talk about looks versus techniques. All right. A huge thing that happens is we live in a world where it's makeup now. That's what I call it. Makeup now. Um, that's what social media is. You watch social media and they promise you that in however long the video is, right? From I don't know, two minutes to a 30 minute video, whatever it is, 
they are essentially telling you, you can do this amazing makeup in this amount of time. Yeah, you can. But there's no way you're going to learn precision and symmetry because you're learning makeup now. It's like fast food makeup. And do you want to be a fast food makeup artist or do you want to be a five-star dining? Michelin, Michelin, you know, dining. Uh, yeah, that's what you want to be, right? So that's why the, the learning is so very important. So as we dive into this and, you know, uh, we talk about it, we're going to be looking at, now we're not going to be looking at a full spectrum of stuff today. We're limited in what we're going to do. Um, we're going to be looking at cat eyes and we're going to be looking at daytime looks. We were going to be looking at fantasy, but then I realized this would be like a 12 hour webinar. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be nuggets, right? It's going to be nuggets. And if you guys love this, which I hope you do, it's going to happen again. So guys, when you see that post go up that invites you to submit, go for it, do it, do it. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to say before we dive in is, can we, you know, I know that Zoom doesn't really allow us to give those applauses and send those hearts, but let's send out a pre, or an early round of hearts for everybody who's brave enough to submit. A lot of people submitted, and believe me, we can't get to all of it, but we are going to do more of these webinars. So um, if your work didn't appear here, do not lose hope. It will appear again. And nobody wasn't picked because they did bad work. Um, things were picked because they taught a certain lesson in a certain way. Okay, so just know that it really served well to help everybody learn. Um, but I want to yeah, congratulate everybody, send them huge love because what they did is big and brave, and that's a pretty awesome thing. Um, and I don't know if I'd be brave enough to do it, I'm a shy person, you know. But so, major kudos to everybody who's willing to do it. So, here's the thing you guys can make any comments you want through this, okay? You can make any comments you want in the side. I, I'd love you to do that. You can make any comments you want. And then the other thing that I want you to do, do me this favor, be extremely respectful. Remember, there is a human being on the other side of every image and chances are they're watching this. So we wanna be extremely um, respectful because uh, believe me, it's hard enough just hearing that things are imbalanced and asymmetrical. So let's just say it lovingly. And the other thing that I wanna tell you guys and the reason it's so important, remember you are not your work. Your work is a technical skill. You as a human being are beautiful, perfect, magical, just as you are. Your work is a different thing. And we are working together to make it better. So those of you who submitted, ooh, I'm so in love with you. I'm so proud of you. And we're gonna make this, we're gonna make this pretty darn magical, okay? So um, let's, get, um, let's get serious. Um, if you're an existing student, you're going to see how far along you are in training your eye. You're going to see, oh my God, I got a lot more learning to do. Or you might go, oh, wow, I'm further along than I thought. Or you might go, God, I really got to start looking at this. And if you're, if you're not a student yet, here's what's going to be really, really, really um, amazing. This is not only going to show you how important training the eye is and jumpstart you ahead of your competition and maybe even serve you really well when you really, truly start learning makeup from a technical point of view. Pretty great, right? But it will also show you how a true professional training program works, like QC. Uh -huh. Nice, major two and one. Um, so if you take things extremely seriously, if you work at the level to which we're gonna work today, you can see your artistry transform and it'll happen fast. Okay, so um, my trusty, trusty love, Karina. Guys, you already know how much she does um, making all these webinars happen, but now today, in addition to all the polls and the everything else, she is also running this PowerPoint that we're gonna do. And this is the very first time we're doing this, guys. So if there's, if there's bumps or uh, scratches in it, just be like, oh, well, it'll get better. But I kind of think it's gonna be amazing. So let's find out what happens. Uh, Karina, image number one. Here we go. All right, guys. Um, you can see this look is by Oh, that's not image number one, Karina. Just a second. Image number one. Okay, guys, take a look at this. So you might have got an idea of, of one place we're going to look. No worries. You've got a little cheat in. Um, let's start with the pros. It's crisp and clean, isn't it? Look at the edges of that cat line, right? Do you see that they're smooth? It doesn't look like it's skipping and dancing across the skin like a, you, know, you, you ever see when those eyeliners, you, have you all taken a rock and skipped it across water and watched it go like this? You've ever seen those eyeliners that are skipping across the eyelid? Remember, there are mistakes in makeup. That's a mistake in makeup. It's not happening here. This is crisp, it's clean, there's no bumps, there's no wobbles. If you look at it, do you see how beautifully it goes in to out, gliding along the lash line, starting out thin, getting rich, thick, and beautiful. It's lovely. Now, let me make a note about this. You see how it's having that nice upward cat lift? There are several things that could have happened here. What she did here is great, but if she wanted to have more of a cat-like appearance, she didn't need to do that little dip down that's happening. She could have right at the end immediately veered up. There's multiple ways to do a cat eye, right? You can scoop down and veer up, or you can veer up right from the end. That one becomes a bit more severe and a, more, a bit more 
traditionally cat-like, nothing wrong with either. That's why I'm pointing that out. Now, my loves, let's look deeper. So don't change the photo yet. Guys, take a good look at it and start to see what you notice. This is where it's gonna get fun, okay? We're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff and we're gonna get extremely, extremely specific. Okay, Karina, change that slide. All right, my loves, how many of you noticed the differences in the thickness? How many of you saw straight away that one was, now that you look at it, quite a bit thicker than the other one, right? Now, at first glance, you might not notice something this specific, but this is the way we need to look at makeup, right? This is the way that we have to do it. Why does it matter if one's a little thicker or not? Do you notice that the thicker one makes that eye look larger? Isn't that interesting? These, 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 it's a perfectly balanced face. This is a beautiful woman with perfectly balanced features, right? But do you see the way that now you're looking at it and you're like, oh wow, it does. It makes that eyeliner not only look bigger, but it also looks higher. It changes the shape and placement of features when things aren't symmetrical. That's why it's so important to, to know it and to see it. Isn't this exciting? Like, that, that's the thing that's so awesome. And again, Amber, this is beautiful work. And one thing that you guys might not know is, a lot of you know this because you've had the opportunity to work with me. There's always an old saying that I love to use now. It's like, uh, what, what would Nathan say? You know, um, WWNS, make, make that your motto. What would Nathan say? And study your work and go, what would Nathan say if he was looking at this? It'll change the way you think. So always use me to your advantage. Now, um, when you look at that, do you see the way, although slight, how that little adjustment could change a lot in the features? That's pretty amazing, right? So there's a lot to learn with that. Now, Karina, go to the next one. This is the one you guys got the slight cheat on. How many of you noticed, how many of you noticed that the angle at the outer corner is slightly different? It's slight, but it's different. Now you guys might go, oh my God, it's so hard to do this. Oh, I know it's terrible. It's so hard. I know how hard it is. But see, when I get to sit on my side and go, be even you know, sharper. Listen, I'm doing it too with my own work. So remember, I do not tell you to do something and not do it myself, right? But you're seeing it. I see the way that you guys are, are making, the, making the note. Now that you're really looking at it, and bravo to you guys that saw it. And those of you that didn't see it but are seeing it now, that's what matters. And those of you that don't see it and are like, it looks exactly the same to me. Don't worry, you'll get there. It's amazing, right? It's re yes, exactly. And guys, thank you for for seeing for, for giving her the, the kudos and the bravos and the love through this because we, we are. Guys, you ever go to those five-star restaurants or you ever watch Top Chef and you watch that person take the tweezers and put the microgreens on the salad? I'm kind of that guy when we do makeup. I'm like the one in there with tweezers like, ah, if you had only made that thinner. That's me. I'm that, I'm that terrorist. I'm that <laughs> makeup terrorist I'm trying to make you better, right? So beautiful, beautiful, but slightly different. Um, now there's things that we want to talk about here. Um, we saw that we saw the slight variance in the outer corner. It's excellent work, but we see, why are we doing this? Why are we looking at this way? Because now that you guys are starting to see this, you're going to start looking for this in your own work. And not only are you going to start looking for, for it in your own work, you're going to start looking for it everywhere. But guess what? Here's the curse of it. You're going to start seeing it everywhere. And sometimes you're going to be like, oh my God, oh my God. I see, I see these things. They're in everybody's makeup. And you will become better the more and more you see. Now, for those of you that are in process and learning, it evolves. It all evolves. And the more effort you put in, the better you become. So it's super powerful, right? And the other thing that um, I think is really awesome for those of you that are like, oh my God, I'll never be able to do makeup. I can't. Yes, you will. Of course you will. And I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be nervous. I want you to be extremely excited because you change the eye, you change the mind, you change the hand. It all goes hand in hand. And here's the deal. This is why we're in school. This is why we're learning. And this is not something you'll learn anywhere outside of a school. And many schools won't even teach you. So we're going to go to another slide. And I want you guys to, now this is beautiful makeup. I want you guys to take a good look at this and I want you to tell me what you see. Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to look at, right? It's a beautiful makeup. Now, guys, get ready because I am going to tell you something and I'm going to spoil some of the fun for you because we already saw some of the things that were slightly different in that first makeup, right? So I'm sure you guys already noticed there's differences in the thickness. Okay, we saw that. You know why we saw it? Because you all have been working on it, right? Good, good catch on the mascara. Good catch on the mascara. In this case, we're really only looking at the cat liner, but that is a good catch. Nice job. Do you see the variance in the angles at the outer corner of the eye? They're there. Now, let me ask you the next question. What else do you see? 
This one's fun. I'm really excited about this because I think this one's gonna get, this one gives people, um, this isn't about anywhere else on the face, guys. This is only about the eyeliner. It's only about the eyeliner. We'll get to full face ones later, but this is, um, this is about the liner. Okay, uh, Karina, you can, um, you can give me the next slide because here's the question I'll ask you. Guys, was this a cat liner that she did or was it a wing? It was a wing. She did a winged liner. Take a look at it. She built a wedge and she, we, she put it going straight out to the side. It's a wing. What does a cat eye do? A cat eye angles upward, giving the appearance that the inner corner of the eye tilts down like a cat. It's a cat eye. You want more information and knowledge on that and all of this? Ah, guys, get in the virtual classroom and go under the homework tab. There is a webinar called Balance in Makeup. It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. Wings extend outward, cat eyes angle upward. They lift, they tilt down, they shape the eye, right? Like a cat's. Now I want you guys to look at something. Notice that when the eyes are closed, doesn't it appear that it's going up like a cat? See that little um, upward angle when the eyes are closed? Now notice when the eyes are open, it doesn't. It angles straight out to the side. What are, what are some things that can, can cause that? The skin moves. Based on when your eyes are open and closed, your skin isn't always necessarily in exactly the same place. Plus when your eyes open, all areas that were once lower are suddenly higher. So things that you thought were going in a particular direction aren't, right? They are, they're, um, you know, angling um, straight out to the side. And again, Michelle, I want to say this is a beautiful, uh, th there's so much beautiful stuff in this makeup, not just what's going on in the eye. There's a lot of beautiful stuff, but you know, we're, we're seeing these sort of solutions. So how do we solve it? If we, if we're like, well, if the eyes are closed and I can't get this angle, how do I get it? Well, sometimes you actually, it's best to set your angle when the eyes are open. So don't be afraid to set your angle when the eyes are open because if you get your liner and you get your baby wedge in there, you can easily draw your little flick when the eyes are open. You know, that's an easy thing for you to do. But the other thing is, remember, sometimes when you do your cat liner by doing a wedge, do you see how she did a wedge first? It's a great way to go into a cat liner. But the wedge can actually trick you and make you think you're going up at a higher angle than you are. You, it's actually a wedge and then the angle of the liner is not actually that angle. You're on the wedge. The flick itself is actually going straight out to the side, but the angle is up the wedge, is angling up. So it can create an optical illusion. Isn't this interesting? Um, so we didn't go over the stuff that was, you know, already there. Did you, now, here's a question. Did you guys notice those, those, those slight imbalances? Did you guys notice those, um, those little elements? Did anybody notice that it was a wing and not a cat? Or do people all think that they're exactly the same? Because I'll tell you, a lot of people think that wings and cats are the same. No, there are variants. It's a cat eye, it tilts the eye down like a cat, right? Um, now, here's a question for you guys. What else do you see? This one's fun for me. I love this, because you're always gonna be like, oh my God, what more is there to see? There's something else to see. And this one I really, really, really love. Okay, Karina, change the image. Did you guys notice that she didn't bring the liner all the way into the inner corner of the eye? Did you guys notice that? Now, what's an interesting thing about not bringing the liner into the inner corner of the eye? And I always ask people this, do you want, do you want it to look like you have eyelashes that go all the way in or do you not? Um, now, here's the thing, you don't have to. You don't have to bring eyeliner all the way in, but it's been very popularized on social media and other people to start the eyeliner really far out. I think that's mostly because they don't know what they're doing and they're untrained because I've never met anybody who doesn't want to look like they have eyelashes that go all the way in. But there's certain looks where you really want it to be about the open eye. Make sure that's the choice. Because in this case, we're asking people to do a classic cat eye, right? A classic cat eye starts all the way into the inner corner of the eye. So we've got to be aware of what our habits are. What are they? Now, I'm not saying you can't start eyeliner out. You can. It's a creative decision. Just make sure you start it in exactly the same place and make sure it adds up for the look that you want. Don't just do it to do it because it's become a habit. But most importantly, before you do it, say to yourself, is this going to enhance my client? Is this going to make them look better? Is this going to lift their features? Is it a better decision for me to do this or not to do it, right? And then make your decision. What are the benefits of um, liner that goes all the way in? It defines the lash line. It makes the eye eyes much more noticeable. You go to them right away. It makes it look like the eyelashes go all the way in. Now, let me ask you something. Go to the next um, slide for me, Karina, my love. What do you guys think when we change this into a cat liner and put the, um, the liner all the way into the inner corner of the eye? What do you think? Do you see the difference? Now, um, you, see, you see the way that that eye looks way higher on the face. Nothing, nothing, nothing has actually changed um, in that application beyond that, um, that shift. 
and you see the way the inner corner of the eye now is tilting downward like a cat's. Do you see what I mean? See the difference between what, now there isn't a right or wrong. There's nothing wrong with a wing, guys. There is nothing wrong with a wing. A wing is a wonderful thing. Wings are beautiful. They have their time and place. You see a tremendous amount of wings in, you see a tremendous amount of wings in um, 50s makeup in, in all kinds of things. They have a place and a time. You just have to know why you're using them and what you're trying to do. That's the important thing. But you, and here's another thing, guys. Depending on where you put the cat angle, the more you vary it, if it goes straight out to the side, it's a wing. And it might as well not be super thick because that's just weird. But um, when it goes straight up to the side, you can angle it in a lot of different um, ways. And the more you angle it, the more dramatic it becomes. Of course, I don't know that you want to angle it right here. But um, the more you angle it right here, the more um, you get that tilt and that lift and the more dramatic it becomes. The longer, the thicker you make it, the more drama that you add. So it's fun, right? It's fun to see the way that we can change this. You can make it way thinner. It'll change the... Um, It'll change the eye, it'll change all kinds of things, right? Changes all kinds of things. It's just important to know. Now, I'm certainly not saying that this is how it has to be done. I'm just saying to you guys, do you notice the way that you just see the definition of the lash line, the eye? The eye becomes more grabbing when the liner goes all the way in. Food for thought. It's food for thought, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to, um, and let me make sure I'm in exactly the right place. Um, I'm following my own little, um, my own little um, slideshow on the side. So the first thing I want to say is I want to recap on this. It's lovely makeup. It's a beautiful, beautiful makeup. And there's a lot of things in here that, frankly, a lot of people in the world wouldn't notice. And we're going to talk about, you might be saying, well, if everyone's not going to notice, why does it matter? We'll talk about that at the end because it does matter. And there's a reason, um, there's a reason why we're going, um, there's a reason why we're going through all of this. Um, okay, so the, the, as we switch to this next image, um, there's one thing I want to tell you. Um, this image is very, very, very close to perfect, okay? There are some micro adjustments in it. Now, in this, we're talking about the cat eye. You know, yes, we can, see, we can see a couple variances in a couple of areas, but we're talking about the cat eye. So the first thing, when you guys look at this, what is it that you start to see in here? What do you start to see, right? And again, guys, we're talking about only the cat eye. We're talking about only the cat eye here. We're going to get to full faces in a minute. Um, all right, guys. Um, Karina, you can slip. You can flip to the next photo. Did you guys notice that one liner gets a little thicker before the other liner does? You'll look right away as soon as you see it. You'll see that one eyeliner gets thicker sooner than the other one does. And that, what that does, and this is the thing you might not realize, that getting thicker sooner makes the angle at the outer corner of the eye different. Now, do you see the way that I've drawn the lines? These lines go from the edge of the nostril to the corner of the eye. When these lines are drawn, you can now see how it's pin close. But do you see how one is a sharper angle than the other? It is pin close. It's so close. Guys, it is so close. You're like taking out your telescope to see what I'm talking about. It's that close. But that's the way that I'm training you guys. I'm training you to see in this way where you look at things and you literally are like a robot who notices everything and be like, I can fix all of this. That's, that's the reality. And, you know, some of you, again, don't, don't, don't anybody um, look, at, look at this and go, oh, my God, this is so hard. This is impossible. No, it's thrilling. It's thrilling. Nadia, I know you're here. Um, like, tell everybody um, how quickly you evolved in this process because this is so close. Like right now, this is what I like to call a micro adjustment. But Nadia, 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 and a lot, you know, a lot of you guys, but Nadia's picture is up right now. Nadia, like, she'll take a comment, and I mean, she will go and she will work it until she knows she's nailed it. That's how you grow, guys. But Nadia, how um, how quickly were you able to sort of grow in these transitions? And I know when you first, and I'll share this because I know she shares it herself. When she first started, um, there were um, there were a lot of imbalances and asymmetries. Now her work is, I have to you have to get in there and really, really, really look for it. And guys, it happened for her pretty darn quickly. But the reason it happened for her so quickly is because she put in an extraordinary amount of work. So new students, the level to which we're looking at these things, that's how you need to work. That's how you really not only enter the competitive world, but smoke your competition. That's how you do it. Isn't that exciting? That's like, that's how you blow people out of the water. Now, existing students on these cat eyes, how much did you guys see, right? That's one thing. How much did you guys see? Now, the second thing I want to ask you, uh, training the eye does take decades. It takes a really, really long time. If you start now, you'll notice small things instantly, but you'll see even more. And remember, step one um, is seeing it. See it, change the mind, change the hand. 
that's the secret. Now, guys, we're gonna go into um, we're gonna go into full faces now. So um, we'll jump right along to the next image. This is a gorgeous image, right? It's a beautiful makeup application. So, I, guys, it's almost sinister of me um, what I'm about to say to you guys. is a trick. I've always got a trick something up my sleeve. What do you guys see? What do you see here? You know? There's stuff. There's a, there's a secret. Yeah, gorgeous, right? Gorgeous. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a dirty trick. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I don't see anything. <laughs> yes. this, is, this is what's really... I love you guys. You guys make me so happy. Um, it's a gorgeous makeup, right? So it's kind of like a, 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 a dirty, evil trick that... Um, oh. Oh, somebody, somebody sees some of the things we're going to talk about. I'm impressed. So these are micro adjustments, guys. And this stuff, like I told you, this is really advanced, guys. This is super, super, super advanced stuff. So one of the first things that I want to talk to you about, um, Karina, you can go to the next, um, next so slide. And I'm seeing people are, people are hitting these. Do you guys see, and now partially, if you really look at it, you'll see she has a little bit more lid space on one side. So the question is, how do you adjust it? How do you adjust the little bit of lid space, right? And I, I know a lot of you guys spotted it, right? So what you do is you consider the balance. You've got to look at it and see your placement. Now, there's two ways that you could fix this, okay? Way, that, way to fix it, number one, is to put a little less, pro not let product go quite as far out on the photo right eye. On the photo left eye, your option is to let the photo, the color come a little bit further out. So now, Karina, go to the next um, image. See this, guys? If that little tiny adjustment, something little tiny like that, do you see the way that that instantly balances the eye? Now, of course, we're not, we're not, we're not going in and change the makeup. I'm just showing you if the product is filled in in that area, you see that instantly everything becomes balanced. Now, what's great about this and why I love this, because there's a lot we're going to talk about. People always say, well, what do I do if a human has minor imbalances? Guys, get ready for the news flash. Everybody has minor imbalances. If you didn't know this, I hate to be the one to tell you. Everybody's got minor imbalances. Everyone, all of us. I've got one eye that, did you guys ever see Goonies? Did you ever see the movie Goonies? And you know, Sloth has one eye that's way up here and one that's way down here. Guys, that's me. That's, that's, what, what, that's what's going on in my face. And if you haven't seen Sloth from Goonies, go look. You're gonna be like, oh my God, there's spitting images. Um, he looks exactly like him. I see some of you know who Sloth is. That's, and if you haven't seen it, you're going to be very thankful. It's a super amazing movie. Um, but everybody's got these little imbalances. Everybody's got these little differences, right? So do you see the way that that one little, that one little shift would instantly balance the eyes? Because it is, it's a micro adjustment, but there's nothing wrong that she did here. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny balance, right? Now let's look at something. She's got, there's some great stuff that we can learn on her. You can learn great stuff on everybody, right? But number one, look at her bone structure. Let's have a moment of silence for this bone structure because it's amazing, right? Um, she made a great choice with the blush. She did something that's really beautiful and really reasonable. But I want to show you guys something. This isn't a criticism to her. I'm using this as a teaching moment, okay? Because the blush, the way that she did it, is very beautiful and very appropriate. But if she wanted to further sculpt the face, and if you wanted to sculpt the face on somebody who didn't have the gorgeous natural structure that she has, because not everybody does. Everybody's different. If you want to sculpt the face a little differently, Karina, go to the next image. Do you see where if you come down, now she's the perfect example. I'm always telling people, put blush in the lower rounded part of the cheekbone. How do you find it? Your finger dips in below it. Do you see how her face naturally indents there? That's what we're trying to do with blush and contour. She was born with it. So for us to be able to show on her is an amazing way for people to go, I get it now. This rounded lower part of the bone, exactly where I put the swish, you can see exactly how that divot with where the contour should go, you see the divot on her. That's where the contour goes, right there. The blush comes in the lower rounded part of the cheekbone. You can stop it where you did on her, or if you want a little more warmth in the features, you just bring a little up on the apple. That's all you do, that one little, little, little change. Now she, because of the definition of her, of her face, if you choose to, you can go a little hair lower with the blush, and we're gonna talk about these things as we go forward, but that's, that's gonna differ on each person depending on what you're trying to create. Notice that I stopped that right in line with the pupil. Why is that? If you bring blush too far over, you start to make the nasal labial fold really prominent, and you can start to make the nose look red. You can take dimension out of the face. And why are we keeping the highest part of the cheekbone free, just as she did? It makes the cheekbones higher. Is it like you guys are seeing it in action. She put the blush in exactly the right place, right? She brought it in exactly the right place. So these cheekbones are going, they're popping through the ceiling. It's, um, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And it's artfully, artfully, artfully done. Now, 
I already saw that some of you guys um, made comment on this, and I know I'm being super, 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 super picky, right? I'm being super, super, super picky. Karina, go to the next image. Guys, those of you that noticed the difference in the lips, you were correct. Do you see that she's favoring the entire photo left lip? The entire photo left lip is fuller. And then you'll notice on the photo right lip, do you guys notice that from right about here on in, she suddenly jumps to the inner lip line? She's on the outer lip line on the photo left side, but she jumps to the inner lip line on the photo right. An extremely common mistake that people make. Guys, get in the virtual classroom and watch the webinar, Common Mistakes in Makeup. This is one of the ones I talk about. Another common mistake in makeup, and sometimes we, we naturally have, guys, right? We have a, one lip that's bigger than the other. Everybody does. Everybody has these imbalances, except like Scarlett Johansson. I think they said that the two most symmetrical people on earth are Scarlett Johansson and Leonardo DiCaprio. So aside from them, we all got something going on, right? So if you, if you want to balance it, right? If you want to balance and you want to find those areas, all you got to do is apply a little bit more um, lip liner here and stay on the outer lip line here and it's instantly perfected. Now, is that something that you have to do or have to fix? It depends on the client because I'll tell you, lips are an extremely personal thing. I have worked with some of my celebrities and I adjust their lip for symmetry and they're like, this isn't my lip. This isn't my lip. I don't like it. And I take it off and they, they're used to their lip being the way, it's a personal, personal thing, okay? Now, I wanna point out one other thing, guys. Okay, uh, Lucy, I love that. Don't be happy unless the client's happy. That's exactly it. And that's why makeup is a very interactive thing. You know you're making a mistake if you just sit down and start working on the person. No, you interact with them. You talk to them as you go. Not like, you like the weather? Do you love living in Florida? No, you can say that at the end. doesn't matter. But while you're in the process, guide, guide them on the journey with you. Because when they're on the journey with you, they're going to love their makeup. So what we did in here, guys, these are really, they're micro adjustments. And when we're looking at it, it's starting to show you how when you work with, um, when you learn makeup from a theory point of view, that's how you start. People always go, well, how do I learn to work this? All I say is learn makeup technique. Because once you start learning it, you start seeing, oh, it's little shifts. Everything has just shifted ever so slightly. Because do you see the beautiful upward angle she has on the eyeshadow? Do you see the way all of her features are lifting? Do you see her placement of the blush? Do you see how you keep getting pulled up to her eyes? Do you see how you, she didn't dominate the look with her eyebrows and make you go beyond them? This is where you want to stop. This is the money, guys. It's right there. And sometimes if you want to be really sensual, it might be here. Or you might split the difference. But that's the, that's the magic, guys. That's where it is. Like, that's the truth. Now, look right here. I want you to go, um, someone's saying her shadow doesn't look even. No, that's what we, you might not have been, that's what we were just talking about. That's the last note that we were just talking about, how to adjust that. Um, look at the tip of her nose. Now, she might not have strobed it. That might be natural oil in the skin. But do you notice you keep getting, that you look at a lot, but you keep noticing the tip of the nose? That's why you gotta be very careful. Um, it might have been a mistake. It might be something, it might just be natural oils coming through, but then you know, okay, I gotta build a little something in there. Be careful. Shine can really grab the eye. So you gotta be very careful about where you put it and when you use it. Because I don't know about you, but nobody ever said to me, the nose is the window to the soul. No, right? No one's ever said that. So um, we want to just make sure we're soft and delicate about it. Make sure everything you do is always, always, always about choice. So um, when we go into this next one, um, Karina, you can flip. One of the things um, that, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that, um, that people saw, that there's people who saw all of them and people who saw um, a few of them. I, I, guys, that's good. That's really good, right? So you know where you have to go. I'm proud of you. I'm really impressed because, guys, this is advanced. This is advanced stuff. But I also want to ask you this question. How many of you would have seen them if I didn't say, study this makeup? Remember, you are students of makeup. You should be studying every makeup that you see. You will learn. Study, study, study. Okay? Now, um, when we look at this next um, application, there are, th this is the makeup with micro adjustments. There, there are. There, it's, there's a lot of micro adjustments in a lot of these, right? So um, I want you guys to take a good, you know, look at this. Take a good look at it. Now, can we not agree that the lashes are captivating, right? The lashes are absolutely captivating. Why is that? Part of the reason that the lashes are so captivating is because she's so smartly used eyeliner. She used it very smartly, right? She used it in a way that it hypnotizes you to the eyes, like it yanks you up to the eyes. They're beautiful, right? She's got a, she's got a lovely balance of tone on the lip. The skin is luminous. So who sees the micro adjustments? And oh, you're like, oh, okay, here he goes, here he goes. He's about to strike. Um, okay, Karina, you can go to the next image. We're gonna look at them all, all at once, okay? So first things first, number one, 
who noticed that the photo right dropped, oh, there it is. Who noticed that the photo right drop shadow went in further than the photo left, giving a bit more definition to that eye? Do you also notice it makes that eye look a little larger? Micro adjustments. Because guys, we agree, this is a beautiful makeup application, right? It's beautiful. Micro adjustments, they're what make us better, right? Um, do you guys notice, number two, that the inner part of the photo right eyebrow is darker than the photo left? You see it now, right? You see micro, micro, micro. And you might say no one would ever see that. I saw it. And I'll tell you something. Um, and I was going to say this at the end, but I'll say it now. If you start um, working with your clients, right, and um, you're like, oh, these little things don't matter. If they go to competition and get a second trial from someone else who pays attention to and works to perfect these little things, and they both ask you guys to do the same makeup, chances are they're going to naturally like the makeup of the person who understands precision, symmetry, and balance more. Because there's an old saying, guys, beauty is symmetry. You, have you, have all, you all heard that saying? The more symmetrical, the more beautiful things become. That's why we never want to mess up someone's symmetry with our makeup and turn them into, um, you know, um, our pal from Goonies, right? So we want to be specific and careful with what we do. This is small, but it's a valuable learning opportunity. So guys, what do you see with number four? Do you guys know what number four is? Number four, a little tiny bit of um, dark circle. People forget that dark circle is um, above, the, um, above the eye as well. People forget that dark circle is above the eye, right? People forget. There's a little bit of dark circle above the eye. So neutralize that dark circle, it'll open up the eye. Now, another thing that I wanna point out, look at the color, look at the color of the, um, the eyeshadow that she chose. I don't mind that everybody's using pinky shades. I really don't. But my question is, is pink an ideal shade for everybody? It depends. It depends. You want to be careful and make sure your pink doesn't illuminate the dark circle below your eyes. On her, she concealed and color corrected perfectly. It is not. Um, but you also want to look at it and think, is it the most ideal shade? It depends person to person. Do I think she used it well as far as pink goes in the way that people do use them? Yes, I do think she did. But I think that pink is currently that drastically overused and you want to make sure it's a choice and not a habit this is it's beautiful it's beautifully done now what's going on with number three guys do you know what's going on there what is it i want you guys to look at a little tiny bit of color correcting here would give yep guys proud of you um there, she has a lot of natural um red in her skin right not uncommon not uncommon. But if you have to keep the natural red on the skin and then you put your blush down and then you use um, an eyeshadow that is a pinky tone and then you have a pinky tone lip, the whole face can start to look pink. So if you go in with a little color correct on the bottom of the chin and on the nose, then you have full control over where you put the blush, right? And yeah, we can see minor differences in the blush, minor differences. We see minor differences in the lip. We see minor, minor, minor things when we're really studying it. But those are some major lessons in there. And guys, do you see how small they are? They're very small because this is excellent, excellent work. Yes, she's very fair and the red's popping through. But can we not agree that this is beautiful, beautiful work and a couple of small changes, a couple of micro, micro, micro changes would transform everything really, 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 really quickly. It's beautiful. Yes, and you can't help but stare at her eyes. They are captivating. They are hypnotic. It's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Um, it's, it's solid work. It's really, really solid, guys. And the thing is that I want you guys to know, she hasn't been practicing makeup for all that long. I mean, from a, from a true, from the point of view, from the way that I make you work makeup, she hasn't been doing makeup for all that long. That's kind of amazing, right? Everybody's doing incredible work. Like, I think everybody whose work that you've seen, student-wise, these aren't people who've been doing makeup forever. So to already be a point where we're really getting in there with tweezers, that's pretty amazing. So I, I really do. I just want to, you know, send out some more hearts to everybody. And, and I do, you know, know, like everything that I'm saying to you guys, it's all um, from a place of love and to educate everybody. So I never want anyone to feel attacked or shamed or small in any way, shape, or form. Because this is beautiful work and you guys should be extremely proud of yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next application. Karina can change the image. Okay, now this is, a, this is a simple look, right? There's nothing wrong with simple looks. Simple looks can illuminate the face. I mean, look at the skin. The skin is beautiful, it's radiant. She's got a beautiful glow in the cheek. She did a very smart thing. Do you see that she left her skin dewy? 
If she didn't leave her skin dewy, she could age herself. If um, she hadn't um, put a little shine in the lip, there could be some um, soft aging in there. N nice with the notice, uh, the, the soft notice in the brow. There's, there's minor differences. But what we're going to look at here is a bit more specific. Guys, I want you to take a look at the eyeshadow. What do you guys see? When, mm, there it is. There it is. There, it c comes up as Asian sensation. <laughs> like that. Where do you guys come up with these names? Um, look at the eyeshadow. It's angling down. Now, Karina, go to the next image. How would the makeup have changed? Just imagine if no shadow went. No, Karina, the one before, not that one. Um, how would things have changed if um, the makeup, had, Jessica Lee, I should have known that was you. Um, if everything goes at an upward angle, you always lift the eye. Now, you might say, but she's got a recessed eye. What do I do? This is called a recess, in the, in the pro world, we call this a recessed eye. Some people call it a hooded eye, right? Call it a recessed eye, same thing, same thing. So um, I have a, we, we all have lots of varying um, recessed eyes, right? I have a recessed eye. Jennifer Lawrence has a recessed eye. You see them all the time. So what could be, be done to give her the color, to give her the play, to give her the lift? See where that little arrow is? Let the shadow, um, Karina, draw, move the mouse right from the edge of the line to below the arrow. Put the shadow right there, right there in that whole little area. Put the shadow right there. She'll get the lift. She'll get the celebration of color. She'll get all the payoff that she wanted right? That will be a major, majorly important thing. And it will transform the way the features just yank up. So there's a lot to learn from that. That's good. And, I, and I, it's very clean, very clean, very pretty makeup, right? Now, I want her to be careful as well. Do you guys see how much, um, how much shine is starting to develop? You've got to find that spot. Because if they have that much shine in the beginning, remember how much shine is going to start to come later right? Um, more and more and more because our natural oils and we warm up. So just always watch that little bit of balance. This is quite beautiful. Now, somebody, somebody asked a question regarding the hooded eyes. How do you know where to place shadow on a hooded eye and the exact placement of it? This is what I do, guys. I will look at my client. I will look at them. I will ask them to open their eyes and close their eyes and I see how the lid behaves. And then I look at the space where I can see the lid space. And then I go in and I put the color right where I want it. I have them close their eye, I open their eye, and then I build look from there. So there are all kinds of little tricks that you can do to make sure that you're able to nail that. And if at the end you find one, here's what happens a lot. People do the makeup with the eyes closed and then they're done and they don't know, they don't look at it to notice that they went below. If you notice it went below, just take your cotton bud and clean it off, clean it off. And they're like, okay, well now there's nothing. Okay, then I know that I've got to put it up there, solved. So there's lots of little ways to correct it, right? Because anything that goes down pulls the eyes down. And I can tell you, nobody wants their eyes pulled down, nobody. And you, you can even just see the way that when we can't, when we draw on that line there, you automatically see that that eye lifted, right? And I lifted. Amanda, hi, welcome, glad you're here. So um, let's go to the next image, image 19. So now we're going to get a little bit more specific, my loves. Going to get a little more specific. Take a look at this one. All right, why have I drawn a grid on the face? Well, how many of you watch the Balance and, and Focus and Makeup webinar, right? So here's why I've drawn, a, uh, here's why I've drawn a, a grid, right? Take a look at it. When you put the blush in between an imaginary grid with a line below the nose and stopping at the pupils, you will always lift the features. Now, when somebody, when, when people are mature, their skin changes. Things start to slide down a little bit here. The skin changes a little. So if you bring the blush down below the nose, you will start to pull the face down. So do you see where we've got the little um, number, the letter A? Do you see how a little blush goes down there? If that blush doesn't go down there and stops at the pupil, you're going to lift her cheeks. They're immediately going to lift up. Because you'll see, you can see the way she can put it on the lower rounded part of the cheekbone, swoop up on the apple, and she will cause the focus to be yanked back up to the eyes. It pulls everything up. And then when you combine that with an upward angled eye shadow, the eyes just, you get lifted up and you stay up. That's the magic. You can control where people look in a face. Now, this is a beautiful makeup. I'm not giving, these, these aren't heavy criticisms. These are micro adjustments. They are small. Now, do you guys see um, the nasal labial? Does everyone know what a nasal labial fold is? A nasal labial fold is the line that kind of goes from here to here. Some people call it a monkey line, a marionette line. There's a lot of ugly things that people call it. We all have them, right? Everybody's got them. Um, mine's hidden under my beard, a carefully placed beard to hide my wrinkle. Um, laugh line, you know, we've all got them. So if you take your blush, and a lot of people do this, and I call it coloring within the lines. If you take your blush and you bring it down and color it right in along the nasal labial fold, do you know what you do? 
Do you guys all know how color works? What happens when you put a highlight color, which is what a brighter lid is, next to a contour color, which is what blush is because it's darker than the skin? What happens when you put a bright and a dark right side by side? You create a wrinkle. So if you're putting a highlight right near a shadow, you create a wrinkle. Anyone who's taken special effects, you'll know this because right away when you do special effects and we start working on the back of the hand, when a highlight and a shadow go side by side, you create a wrinkle. You do not want to accent someone's nasolabial fold. Caution. Use caution. Okay? So these are tiny, tiny adjustments. It's just about moving the bottom of the blush up ever so slightly. It's about watching these balance points. But guys, this is the thing. And this, I think this is great both for current students, graduates, existing students. There is so much theory to makeup. Makeup is such a deep thing. People always think makeup is unrestrained creativity. I can be creative, do whatever I want. Okay. But you can also do it within certain structures that are built in in the face and your makeup will look miraculous. So I think a little bit more glow in the cheeks that, that, that would be a tiny recommendation that I would have in here. A little bit of glow in the cheeks and those minor adjustments. And I think that you're going to, you know, have some, some crazy math, magic happen. A little bit of balance in the T-zone and you'll be right there. Little, little adjustments. All right, guys, we're going to go to the next image. And this is a fun one. This is a fun one. Take a look at this. The reason I'm saying this one is fun is because, no, no number one, is that skin not gorgeous? Guys, that skin is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, but the first thing that I want to look at here, beautiful foundation match. You, you don't see demarcations. It's beautiful. Looks like skin. Um, are you? There's a lot. There's things that you're probably st already starting to notice, right? Because we've been talking about them. We've been talking about some imbalances. Okay. So do you guys see? Do you guys see the imbalance in the lips? Do you see it? See photo right versus photo left, upper and lower. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it pop up there. You guys see the imbalance, right? Um, you see it. Now, there are several things in here. And the reason that I wanted to point this one out is this makeup, and one in a major way, two in subtle ways, it's doing some very, very, very heavy social media things. Now, why do I want to bring that out? Because social media, makeup now, as I say, can create habits in people that they cannot break. It creates habits in people that they don't even know that they're doing, right? habits that they can't even move or slip past or they might not even be aware of, right? What is one of the number one things that's being done in makeup for the last like eight months? It's the well-blended eye. It's ivories or vanillas that go into a pink and then the pink swoops around the lower corner of the eye and it's really thick. It's a well-blended eye. It's extremely popularized on Instagram and YouTube and it's always done in pink. Not always. It's pinks, it's garnets. You can do it in any shade, but it's a really particular thing. Make sure it's a choice and not a habit because we never, never, never want to be ruled by trend. We want to be working from choice because does an artist copy or does an artist create? An artist creates. Now, I'm not going to say she copied. This could be a fluke that it looks like, like, um, like one of the most popular looks. And I'll tell you, if you guys were on my side of the computer, it would blow your mind. Because what she did here in this makeup is what 90% of my students, as student, unit A students submit. And if you're a unit A um, student and you submitted um, something that um, looks reminiscent to the use of this color, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and the power of social media and influence. So I want you to be very, 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 very careful with it. Now, the second thing that we're going to talk about, um, and this is, this is very, very, very small, okay? Um, it's very, very, very small. But do you see how much illumination she has in the T-zone? Do you see how much there is? What is one of the things that happens all the time? People sweat. People sweat in their T-zones, right? So if you start right away and your makeup has a lot of luminosity built in there, your client could look like a sweat stack later in the day. You've got to be really, really, really careful, okay? Be really, really, really careful. Okay, now, Karina, you can go to, um, you can go to the next um, image. Now, like I said, everybody's using pink liner. Everybody's using pink shadow. Is it a good choice for everybody? Is it not? It depends. It depends on the shade. It depends on the usage. It depends on the person. Now, when you take a look at this, look at the, the look at the, um, Look at the color on the bottom of the eye. Now, I'm gonna ask you guys a question while you look at this. If I told you, if I showed you this image and, said, and told you she, she was having a really bad allergy day or she'd just been crying for a really long time and you know, then I started her makeup. You see what I mean? Using pink in the wrong way on the lower lash line can really, really, really make it look like you've been crying. And I love here that somebody, um, somebody mentioned the sweaty upper lip. Yes, that's what they call it in the pro world. When you over highlight these lines, they're called the, um, the sweaty upper lip. 
Um, now, going back to what we're seeing up here, do you guys see that um, the two sides, A, are not symmetrical? You see it, right? And the more you examine it, you're going to see they're, they're, they're actually quite asymmetrical. Look at B. Do you see how asymmetrical B is? Do you see that um, one is way thicker than the other? Dramatically thicker, right? You see it, right, guys? Now, why might it not have been so immediately noticeable unless you were choosing to study it? Do you guys know? Because she's using light colors. Light colors forgive a thousand sins because you can be messy with light colors and people won't notice. Now, can you imagine if she had a really super thick drop shadow on one eye and a thin one and they were done in black? Why are we only going to be more symmetrical and precise for our clients when we use dark colors? Or are we going to use our precision symmetry and balance from moment one? Right? Now, this isn't a criticism or attack, guys. I'm posing questions to start a conversation and make you think differently. A huge part of our success is thinking differently. We have to think differently. So if she had darkened these shadows, if these were dark shadows, they would be, they would, you would see just how um, asymmetrical they were. You can even see that one shadow was higher, one goes lower. You'd notice straight away, but we want to be in a position where we're not letting ourselves off the hook when we use lighter shades. We are, we are, we are using precision symmetry and balance 100% of the time, every single step of the way. Um, the thing with social media and I, again, this isn't a commentary on this makeup. This is um, me talking about um, makeup in general. Um, the thing with social media is because it's makeup now, it doesn't teach you technique. It literally just teaches you, oh, look, you put this on and you put this on. And then people do what they do, but they don't take the time to see what everything's doing. What do angles matter? You know, because even if you look at the angles at the outer corner of the eye, you'll notice what the differences will be. And Harleen, I appreciate what you're saying there. That the darker brown would have been very flattering. I agree. I think a brown would have been much more flattering than using... The, the color that's so in right now, but people end up in those habits, right? You wanna just make sure you're working from choice. Now, I also wanna point out, can we all please look at the absolutely amazing drawing on the wall behind her? I'm obsessed with it. Guys, I, as soon as this photo came in, I'm like, I am obsessed with that drawing. I want it to hang on my wall. This is just amazing. But also, I do, I do want you to know, guys, there's a lot of strength in this makeup. The brows are softly and artfully done. She's chosen really lovely colors in, in the lips and other areas. There's, the, the, the skin work is astounding. So I don't want you guys to think, oh my God, he's attacking. I'm not attacking you. This is all for learning. And this is a really, it's a beautiful makeup. And when we challenge and we push ourselves, that's how we grow, guys. When you're willing to open your eyes from this perspective, that's when you really see differently, which is why I want to, I want to, I, I read, and I got to tell you, I think that I'm really glad that you submitted this one because it's a combination of several things. There is extraordinary artistry in it. And then there's some things that appear to me to be a little bit of habit, right? And when we work from habit, we're never live with the client. We are never, never, never live with the client. So when you work with habit, you're in your mind. You're working from habit. When you're standing with the person, you're in the moment. You're really working. That's our job, and I want that to be one of the main differences for you. So, um, Karina, you can jump to the next image, because this is where you can kind of see where I really illuminated the areas that are so bright. Do you see, do you see the brightness in them? Do you see it? Um, and when my hand appears, I'm looking at the same stuff on the image you guys are, so uh, sorry if you see me in the lower corner gesticulating. Um, you will, you, you see the way that that can really start to grab focus, the way that, you know, in these areas, you really start to be pulled. You're really looking at some of these areas. Now, here's my question. It's so popular for people to put a dot here, a dot here. I don't know if it does what people think it does, or why are people choosing to do it, to realign my nose? Very few people need nose contouring. Very, very, very few. But social media has made people believe that everybody needs it. So it's about being very careful. Now look at B. Did, how many of you notice that the eyeliner didn't go all the way into the inner corner? How many of you noticed that? Now, it doesn't have to where it can. It depends on what you're trying to do. But I want you guys to look at, um, I want you guys to look at the, um, the next photo. I want you to take a look at the next photo and see the slight difference that happens. When, now look at photo right versus photo left. Do you see the difference when the eyeliner goes all the way into the inner corner of the eye? It's tiny. Now, does that have to happen? Do you have to do that? No, but you, a pin thin eyeliner, what's called natural eyeliner, it's, there's a lot of ways to do eyeliner. In this course, you learn three that can be turned into millions, right? But 
that pin thin line doesn't make it about the eyeliner. It makes it about defining the eye. And it really makes the eye captivating. And guys, I tell you, nothing has been done to this photo aside from adding a black line to it and putting an A and a pink arrow on it. There's no other changes, right? So the only thing that's making the difference here is that addition of that one small thing. But you guys can see how powerful it is, right? One small thing can change the entire balance, precision, symmetry. And the only way that we can ever do this, it's, it's by training the eye. It's the power of training the eye. You know, back to, you know, the photo, this photo can stay, but when you see this illuminated T-zone, how is it going to look later, right? We can't always consider now. We've got to look into later. How do things look later? And that's why we want to always consider when we work with, um, when, we're, when we're doing things, and it's good. We've got to know the difference between classic technique and trend. We've got to know the difference and we've got to be using it by choice. I think that's the most important thing that I've got to say. We've got to be using it by choice. It should never be a habit, right? Um, simple things can change everything. And that's the power of makeup education. That's why we're here and learning. That's why QC exists. That's why we have these amazing programs, right? And that's the power of additional knowledge, additional information, and of course, training the eye. So um, there's a couple of things I want to say. Um, Number one, thank you to every single person who, um, who submitted their work. I'm extremely proud of you, and I'm very, very, very impressed. Um, this is good, strong work, and that's why we're looking at it from these perspectives. Everybody who worked here submitted very strong work that we could see varying degrees of adjustment in that could change everything, right? Magical. Now, are you also starting to see what happens when you really learn to balance precision symmetry? and look at things in that way. If you learn classic technique and really hold yourself to the highest standard for precision, symmetry, and balance, do you know what's gonna happen? Do you guys know what'll happen? You will be untouchable. Nobody will be able to compete with you. And there's an that it's an extraordinary thing, right? So passion, excitement, knowledge, training, they all add up. But taking that moment to really learn to work in such an incredible, precise way, that's one of the things that separates an amateur from a pro. That's one of the things that will supercharge you and put you leagues and leagues and leagues ahead of your competition. And yes, yes, if you work with me, you're going to begin to treat your eyes like a microscope and you're going to look at your makeup like a microscope right? You were going to look at it with extraordinary precision and balance. And why am I pushing you to master these techniques in this manner? Do you guys know? Because when you can do an eyeliner that crisply, when you know how to do eye eyeshadow and where to place it and why, each step can be combined to create anything, to create it perfectly. It's little, little, little tiny micro adjustments that change everything. Now, I've already told you the power of it. Your client may not see it when you just do it. Some of it you didn't see. But if they see one next to the other and they're doing trials and everybody's voting, and balance in their makeup. That's a reality. Guys, if nobody's told you yet, to, but first, first, did you guys find this helpful? Did you guys enjoy this? Did it, did it make you think? Uh, did it scare you? You know, I'm, I'm curious to know um, what, what you guys thought. Did it, did it make you know, I'm going to get there. This is what I'm going to do. Um, you know, all of that can be true. Isn't this interesting? Okay. Um, I love seeing this. Okay. 78% of people want to work more on symmetry and precision. 58% people want to use, wanna use um, technique. Um, to create a unique look. 47% um, want a greater understanding of the classical techniques. 43% want um, to know how to work from classic techniques and not trend. And then I'm very curious to see the others, um, the other ones. Uh, guys, if no one's told you yet today, allow me to be the first. You are loved. You are valuable, beautiful, and special exactly the way that you are. Those of you who sent in your work, um, and allowed us to help you grow and to help everybody grow through your work, you get double the love from me today. But you all get so much love. You're, um, you're magical, beautiful people. You are, um, you are an army of people transforming people's confidence and self-esteem. You are an army of people bringing good beauty and light to the world. And you're magical. You're beautiful and you're, um, you're special. So remember, everything that we're doing here in this webinar, we all do for each other in the virtual makeup classroom. So take advantage, guys. Take advantage. And remember, your education is only what you do with it. So if you really maximize this learning, if you maximize your time with us, if you keep learning, if you take the advanced courses and challenge yourself, you will be untouchable. There's nothing that'll stop you. I love you guys. And until I see you again.